Just a quick tutorial on how to use the Jupyter Notebook for your first lab. I've already installed Anaconda Navigator. I've opened it up. I've created an account. You don't have to do that. Uh, I did it through GitHub. I connected it so I have use of the AI Assistant. I'm going to launch Jupyter Notebook. So now that I've launched it, you can see this terminal window getting it ready. And now I have a browser window open. And I can see um, my files in there. So I'm just going to get this to be the right size for this window. All right. So now we can kind of see what's going on. I'm going to navigate my way to where I've decided to keep my lab. So I'm going to teaching for me and labs. And I'm keeping this in this lab recordings folder. You can keep it wherever you want. You'll notice I've placed the penguins CSV file in this data sets folder. Again, you can do that however you like. I've just chosen to organize things like that. So I'm going to double click on this lab to open it and I'm off. Okay. So what this does is it pops up the Jupyter Notebook on the left and you're using the most recent version of Anaconda and you're logged in, you'll see this AI assistant on the right, which is really useful. Okay, so there's a lot of text here. You can read it on your own. I'm just gonna scroll down to the first thing I'm supposed to do and it says, enter my name here. So I'm gonna type into this cell, my first name and my last name, and then I'm gonna run the cell. The easiest way to do that is you can click this triangle play button that runs the cell. When the cell's running, you'll see a star here. That was so fast we didn't really see it. And it replaces it with a number, which is kind of the run order. Okay. Now, if I was using JupyterLab Desktop, I'd have to install the Seaborn package. I'm using Anaconda, so it's already installed. And now I need to import all of the libraries or packages that I need. Okay. This is a really important cell. If I don't run this, I'm going to do it this time. Instead of pressing this play button, I'm going to press shift enter. Once I've highlighted the cell, I press shift enter. I get that star. It's going to take a little longer, but now all of these libraries are available for all of the cells below. It's really important to note that when you're creating variables, when you're changing numbers, when you're importing libraries, whenever you're doing something, you have to run the cell for it to be available to the other cells. Otherwise, it doesn't know what's there. It's just text that you've written. You have to run it using either play or something like shift enter to get it to work. There are other commands you could try like uh, run all cells, but we're just going to focus on running cells one at a time. If you're in Colab, you need to mount your Google Drive to get access to the CSV file that we're going to need, but we're going to ignore that for here because I'm doing this in Anaconda. Okay, so you should have already downloaded the penguins.csv dataset. You can see I've already done that. Um, we saw it sitting in the folder. So we have to determine the path, okay? The path is just the um, subdirectory and file name for where your penguins dataset is sitting, okay? So for me, it turns out that like in this example, it was sitting in the subfolder datasets and it's called penguins.csv. So I can just type that in here and I can just run this cell and it's gonna be fine. It didn't give me an error. If I did the wrong thing, if I said just penguins.csv, which kind of presumes it's in the same folder as my lab, then I'm going to get an error. Okay? But it's actually sitting in a subfolder. So when I do this, I get no error. Another way to get it is to navigate to the file and then right click in a particular way, sometimes holding. Uh, option or other buttons, right, holding shift, then you can copy the path name and just paste that here. That's another option. Okay, let's take a, so now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to walk through the lab super fast. I'm not going to read any of this. You can take your time to read it and play with it on your own. I'm going to run this cell. It gives me a snapshot of the data set. You'll see it's truncated here. So it shows me the first five penguins. It starts indexing at zero. And then it shows me the last five. And I can just use this to kind of get an idea of what's going on. If I wanted to see the whole data set, I could run this command set option to no max rows and then run it again, calling the penguins data set. And then you can see, I can see all 344 penguins here. So it does take up a lot of scrolling to see them, but it's all there, okay? 
And what we can see in this data set is there are penguins, we have their species, the island where they were found, their bill length, depth, flipper length, body mass, sex, and the year um, that they were found. And what we're going to do here is we're going to just look at some basic summary statistics. So the nice thing about this pandas framework is that it can compute a lot of things for you. So it can compute the average or the mean, the standard deviation, it can find the minimum value, the maximum value. What you're asked to do down here is to figure out how heavy is the heaviest penguin. And in fact, it just tells you right here, this number is the heaviest penguin because that's the maximum body mass. And if we were to come up here and scroll, you know, we could do that manually. I could come and I could find it sitting in the data set somewhere. So I think it's somewhere around here. So this is that penguin. Okay, this penguin was the heaviest one. Now, scrolling and looking for that is not a very efficient or reliable method. We could write our own code to traverse that data set, but the nice thing about all of this is we don't have to do any of that. Unlike in previous semesters, we're just using built-in functions. And we're always gonna give you the built-in functions. You just need to learn how to call them after seeing an example. So I can type this in here, and this actually turns out to be a markdown cell. It's just a text cell with a little bit of formatting options, like this makes the text a little bit larger. So I type this in here, and I'm gonna again run this cell to get the text to show up again. Right, so all of these cells you can see are kind of a code called markdown instead of code. Okay, and then when I run the cell, I just get the text. You don't need to learn markdown, we're just gonna provide it for you when you need to enter things. I'm just showing you that it's a little bit different than the code cells like these. We can do a few more things. In this lab, we're not trying to learn what a histogram is. I'm just trying to show you what the power of some of these built-in functions are. So, you know, I can run this one line. I can see a histogram of all the bill lengths. So I can see how many penguins have different bill lengths. I could normalize it by the total number of penguins to get an estimate of the probabilities. I could even fit a curve. That's pretty easy to do with these flags. Again, writing code for this would take quite a few lines. I could add another flag here, the species, and then I can see overlaid histograms broken down by species. Okay, so I can see that the different species have different distributions of bill length. I could point, plot the bill length and bill depth together in a scatter plot. We'll talk more about that later. And you can see there I can really start to distinguish the species from just those two measurements. So there's kind of these three clusters, and we'll talk a lot more about that later on. And I can just keep going. I can make more interesting plots. So here, for instance, I can plot the mean body mass based on the sex, so that's this blue or orange, and based on the species. And this black bar here is kind of the error bar or standard deviation. So this is telling me kind of um, for up to a certain probability, I kind of expect the penguins to stay in this range. I know there are some out this side this range, but this is something quantifying the range that I expect to see. And we'll talk more about that as the semester progresses. You know, I can also try to fit a line. So I could try to predict the build depth as a function of the build length. Okay, so I fit these lines. And then this um, shaded region is the kind of quantifying the error in some way, right? And the last thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna call this built-in data set, which shows us that sometimes when you fit a line, it's a good idea like here. Sometimes it's not a great idea because there's a curvature. We should have fit a curve. And sometimes there are outliers, and we should really think about whether we should throw out these points or adapt to them in some way, rather than just naively fitting a line using the built-in function. Okay, that's the first lab. All I need to do is upload this to Gradescope. So I just take this file and upload it to Gradescope for grading, and that's it. That ends the first lab. One thing I wanna point out while we're still here is I can talk to this assistant, and I can ask it to help me do some other things. Like, let's say I want to count how many occurrences of Adelie penguins there are in the data set, okay? So I could ask this, how do I count the number of occurrences of a specific value in a column of a panda's 
data. So that's very specific. And it says, okay, I could do value counts, all right? So I could just say, hey, what I want to do is look for the counts using this code. So you can actually get the code you need using this, and we totally support that. What we're trying to do in the context of these labs is just learn how to interpret the data and visualize it. You're free to use these AI assistants to help you generate the plots and statistics that you need. Okay, and we'll see more about that in future labs.